Uh, good evening. So this is a Great Barrington Planning Board meeting for Thursday, March 31st, pursuant to Governor Baker. Oh, this meeting is being recorded. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's June 16, 2021 revised order extending remote participation by all members in any meeting of a public body, this meeting of the planning board will be conducted by remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the meeting may do so by following the instructions at the top of the agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And we have a second new announcement. Per section 241.1 of the town code, except for procedural and housekeeping matters, town residents shall have the right to address the board on any item that requires a vote at a time before the board votes on that item. Such residents will be allowed as much time as proponents of an item if uh, is permitted to have. And what we will do while we are in Zoom format is um, keep the attendees list up on the participants and watch for hands being raised. So with that, we'll start with a roll call attendance. Jonathan Hankin. I am here. Pedro Pachano. Present. Malcolm Fick. Here. Jeremy Ega. Here. He's here. Brandy Nelson here. All right, great. So we don't have any four A's, Chris? No. Seeing no form A's, we'll move on to approval of the minutes of March 24th, 2022. Do we have a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Thank you, Jonathan. Do we have a second? No second. Thank you, Malcolm. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, Jonathan, what's your vote? Aye. Pedro, what's your vote? Aye. Malcolm, what's your vote? Aye. Jeremy, what's your vote? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Um, next item is number three, the public hearing for 183 Division Street special permit continued from March 10th, an application from Shea Allister Israel Team LLC 21 South End Ave, New York, New York, for a special permit to create a rear lot in an R2 zone at 183 Division Street, Great Barrington in accordance with sections 4.3 and 10.4 of the zoning bylaw. Malcolm. Yes, um, <clears throat> I missed that uh, last meeting, but I uh, have reviewed the official audio and video recordings. I've read the transcripts and all hard copies and filed uh, this fact with the uh, town clerk. So I should be able to participate in this uh, hearing. Great, thank you. That gives us a full five person board for decision making. I appreciate that. All right, so we need to vote to reopen the public hearing. So moved. Thank you, Jonathan. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Malcolm. If there's no discussion, Jonathan? Aye. Pedro? Aye. Malcolm? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Brandy? Aye. All right, so we have the public hearing now open. Um, we had asked the um, applicant at the last meeting to provide us some additional and updated information. Uh, pertaining to well and septic and placement of wetlands in relationship to driveways. Uh, and we did receive some updated information. So Heather, did you wanna run us through that information? I'd love to. Um, Chris, can you pull up the PDF that I sent along, please? And Heather, if you don't mind just giving your full name for our record. Heather Brown, representative for Israel team from Foresight Land Services. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And I, see, I see Shay is on too. I've promoted to panelist. I don't see anybody else uh, from the team. Oh, thank you. I don't see anybody else from the team in, in the room, but we'll we'll watch. And of course, um, if you need anybody else, we can we can do what we need to do. Let me find the plan and I'll put it on screen so you and the attendees can see it. Thanks, Chris. And then Heather, you can just drive me around and uh tell me what to look at okay can you see the plan on screen we can mm -hmm. that's the old one okay yeah that uh, one's this, a good one yeah this is the updated plan heather um all right let's focus on the wetlands and the the driveway going to the rear lot 
And I should uh, say, when you describe things, use your directionals east, west, north, south, rather than over there and up oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just easier uh, when, we, when we do the minutes to know what we're talking about. All right. Um, just to give note, the north arrow actually faces towards Division Street. Just for everybody knows, do you want me to do east, northwest based on the plan? or based on the north arrow? The north arrow, please. Okay. So we're looking, if you could zoom into the wetlands that are actually on the west, on lot one, correct. We have a 100 foot buffer zone, which is required to be outside of. So what we have is the common driveway in the beginning coming off of Division Street, and then it goes on to the rear lot and it is outside of the wetland buffer zone, which is in compliant with the state. That was one of the questions and I hope I've addressed it. And another question that came up was the buffering or the landscaping plan that would be on the east side of lot two or the rear lot. There's not gonna be any type of landscaping done there. The client would like to have that remain wooded and natural. Another question that was um, brought up by the board was where the perk tests were located, which if you look in the southeast corner of the lot, that's where the land perked. And there is required by the state to be 100 feet away from a well or a septic field. That is the circle that is from our closest perk test. We cannot go any closer to the abutting lands based on that circle. And I did not get any information from the Board of Health at the moment um, to confirm exactly where the septic or the well was for the abutting lands. But I went out and we located roughly where the edge of woods were and the clearings based on the new design of that house and where all the clearing was. Um, I feel that where the perk tests fall right now, we are in compliance with the state. And I do not believe that the design will go any closer than what you see there. And you've got an aerial there too, Heather. Yes, I do. Show that. I would, please. Yeah, I think that when you talk about the clearing, it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, you should be able to, I hope you can see that. Is that clear to the panelists and the board? Yep. 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 Okay. Um, the other question that kept coming up was the, um, if you go to the special permit 10.4, there was a question of potential financial impact and also to the neighborhood impact. This is a residential home. It's not a business. Um, with that said, I don't think that it would impact the neighborhood at all. It's it's all residential out there. Um, is there any questions that the board would like to ask me about what I presented based on the questions from last time we met? Jonathan, do you have any questions? No. Pedro, do you have any more questions? Yeah, I do not. Malcolm, do you have any additional questions? Um, <clears throat> so are, you're saying this will not operate as a short-term rental? I cannot state what the client tends to use this land as, but as of right now, it's a residential home. Okay. Anything else, Malcolm? No. Jeremy, do you have any questions? Yeah, so I had a question. So um, uh, you had said that no additional um, added vegetation along the east. So that's the, um, so east is between, um, the um well between uh, you and the abutters correct correct it would be on the east line of lot two and so what you said that there would be no additional besides the existing i guess trees that are there right it's going to be just natural clearing to put in the driveway for the the residential home and so no adding of any additional not of... at this time okay
I guess um, the one thing we heard from the members of the public, Heather and Shay, is that you know they're concerned about traffic and headlights coming up and down. Is there any consideration you'd give for doing a little bit of screening in there or at minimum try to preserve as many trees as possible? It, it looks like the driveway is gonna go you know, right through some fairly substantial trees. So if I, if I may, I was asked to raise the hand before you yeah, allow please, me to uh, speak. So yeah. first of all, thank you guys for uh, letting me on. And uh, uh, I'm the applicant and I, I represent actually two families to give you a, a general background about who we are. We're two families, I myself, uh, I'm an architect. Uh, my, uh, the other family includes an interior designer. We bought the property together in order to enjoy together both families and our plan is to retire there as well. However, we want to retire not at the same house. So, you know, we, we would like to uh, build another unit for the second family, whether it's gonna, I'm the second or first, that's something to consider. But, uh, you know, the idea is that we're gonna put another unit on the property for ourselves. Uh, in terms of uh, vegetation and any screening between the two properties, we would like to keep it as natural as possible and as is right now. Uh, please keep in mind that, you know, during the summer, there's much more greenery on the trees. It's full of leaves. We can hardly see the next door house uh, uh, from, from, our, from our house. Uh, the neighbor's house is, is completely screened, uh, obviously more in the summer than in the winter. We do not oppose uh, adding vegetation if it helps, or you know if if uh, we can work it out also with our neighbor if there's a need for a low fence. I don't, uh, you know, I don't believe that we would want to see fences between properties. That's, you know, I don't know if this is the nature of the of the neighborhood. I don't think so. I haven't seen too many uh, real high uh, fences that block views, but. Um, you know, we, we, we are here really to get, the, uh, to get the approved what we're asking for, which is the um, dividing the property into two lots to allow us to build another unit on the property. Thank you. If there's any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, I have one more question. So um, Heather, um, in the uh, plan that you provided back to us, there's still a, a leader that points to the driveway on the rear lot that says 14 foot wide common driveway. Um, if I understood correctly from your earlier presentation on the 10th of March, the common portion of the driveway is really only gonna be like the first 30 or 40 feet, right? Correct, yeah. And, and so there's no real reason why you would need a 14 foot wide driveway. Um, if it's just serving a single family house, you could skinny that driveway up and you could work it between the trees a little bit more and preserve the wooded character. See what I'm saying there? Yes. Um, I can look into the design of the driveway and see how the grading works for that. It might be the reason behind why they did it 14 feet. I will double check with um, the project engineer on that. Yeah, I'd encourage you to put in, you know, the narrowest driveway that you can for a single family house. Less maintenance overall, long-term, you know, and if I recall correctly, it's fairly flat in through there. It is Brandy, flat. Brandy, do you know what a, width of driveway the fire department requires? Typically it's 12 feet. You know, the wheelbase on the fire truck is like eight and a half feet. So with mirrors and things like that, 12 is very comfortable. Okay. If I could just add one thing, I think it's a, a great idea for um, for the neighbors to get together and talk about any issues that come up, so I would encourage uh, I would encourage you guys to to connect and, and try to solve any issues having to do with this driveway on your own. It's a good suggestion. Um, okay, board members, if you don't have any additional questions, we'll um, move on to opening up the dis the. I 
Oh, oh sorry. Does Jack have a have question? A, Jeremy's got a question. Yeah, I had a follow up. Um, so um, they talked about the um, uh, sight lines between um, the property and the um, closer of the two houses, but from the um, the new site, what is the sight line like between uh, that site and the uh, the second house? It's all wooded. Yeah. What do you mean sight line? No, we're not, we're not doing a site plan review. We're doing a rear lot and a. No, no, no I, I get that because when we were talking about um, when we were talking about the buffer between the two properties, I would imagine mm -hmm. part of it is because of the headlights that would go in. Mm -hmm. um, from, uh, so I was thinking more exiting uh, the property, how the headlights are gonna. Are, it, what does that sight line look like between the the new house or what would potentially be the new house, uh, the end of the driveway? And the uh, the rear house on the um, on the abutting properties. I don't think there's a house sighted yet, Jeremy. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. But but we know where the end of the driveway is going to be, right? Yeah, I think we're exceeding our authority here because that's not a common driveway at that point. That's a private driveway. We don't tell people where to put their driveways. Okay. But I was, uh, so we're not talking about screening between the driveway, the common, well, I mean, isn't the whole driveway then not a common driveway? So we're only talking Almost about- Almost all, feet? just that first 30 feet or so is the common so driveway. Are, so are we really just addressing that first 30 feet? Yes. So we're not talking yeah. about any buffer if, beyond that. If, if you remember, there's been a change. So we received a, a different plan initially. And then at the meeting on the 10th, we were presented an updated plan yeah, exactly. um, that shortened the common portion of the driveway. So oh, the I discussion would be different if we were looking at the original plan, Jeremy. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so we'll open it up to uh, questions from the public. So members of the public, if you have any questions, you want to just raise your hand and Chris can um, unmute you. I see we have maybe five people as members of the public. I see one hand raised, Chris. Daniel Bursa. Hey. Daniel Bursa should be ready to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dan Bursa, 181 Division Street. Um, regarding the question on the uh, um, economic or financial impact on the neighborhood being that it is residential, um, I guess one of our main concerns is that um, if the second house uh, were to be erected, whether, um, I mean, the current the house that's on the lot one um, is used as a short-term rental um, with a listed capacity of 14 people. And if a second house were to go up with a similar um, occupation uh, limit being advertised, um, I guess our main concern is both houses being rented out at the same time and having large noisy parties over there. Um, you talking 20 to 30 people. Uh, from both houses being rented out at the same time, I guess that's one of our main concerns. And I didn't really hear uh, Mr. Alster answer that. Uh, Ms. Brown answered that question, but I didn't hear any input from Mr. Alster on that question. So Mr. Bursa, we don't normally have this be a, a back and forth between the applicant um, you know, at present. Any property owner needs to follow our town laws as far as how they use their property. Um, and I'm sure you're probably aware of the current um, discussion about short-term rentals that are going on in town. 
So, you know, things are, I think are, are changing. Um, but at present, we're not able to control the use of the property. It has to be used, you know, per the R2 zone. So that's all we can do at this point in time. Okay. I would encourage them, uh, Brandy, both Mr. Burgessall and Mr. Alster, to look at 7.16 of our zoning bylaw, which uh, describes a little bit of what they can do with their home. Sure. Um, with regards to this topic. Yeah, and I think, Pedro, you made a good point the other day. I mean, I think I can speak from experience. I've had neighbors rent their houses as short-term rentals and you know, I've gone and had a dialogue with them, Mr. Bursa, and just, you know, wanted to understand frequency and who's watching the property and just, you know, make sure people are being neighborly because um, everybody has the right to enjoy their property. <laughs> so hopefully uh, you, you know, the applicant and you, Mr. Bursa, can have a, have a conversation about your concerns and you guys can work it out as good neighbors. Okay, thank you. thank you. I do have a follow up question for Chris, if that's possible. Yes, please. Hi, Chris. Um, at the last meeting, I believe you're going to look into what the discussion was back in the period of time when the uh, this bylaw uh, change was made, and what, what the discussion was at the time and why it was being done. Do you, did you, uh, find any pertinent information regarding that? Um, you know, I, I'm, I have to admit, I did not go back and, and do that. Um, and I'd be happy to try to access my, my memory banks or, or do that again. Um, I, I'm sorry, I have to say I did not. <laughs> I, I went back to, uh, it looks like this uh, language was put in when the uh, uh, bylaw, uh, the whole bylaw was rewritten back in- That's the, correct, in 2010. And there's very little discussion on the details in the minutes. Uh, in fact, there's no discussion in detail in the minutes. So the minutes say that uh, all the items were discussed and, the, and then voted on. What I do remember uh, during the planning board's discussions in in 2009 and 2010, when the board was looking at the entire bylaw, and I, I think Mr. Bursaw, this is what you and I discussed when we when we met um, at town hall, uh, was that the the rear lot indeed was meant to be a way um, a, a, a method in the middle of just splitting a lot in a sense by right through a subdivision not required process, the 4MA process. That's where you, ha you have enough frontage and you can easily split a lot. And then the, the extreme would be uh, you didn't have enough frontage and you needed to add a subdivision road, which is a long, complicated and, and expensive process. And the idea that the board discussed at the time uh, with the attorney who was assisting the board with the bylaw was, hey, there's this other model that exists between the form A lot split on the, on the easy end and the subdivision road on the more difficult and extreme end. There's this middle ground where um, the planning board can, by special permit, create this lot that doesn't have the typical amount of frontage. Um, and so, and I think that's how, how I explained it then. I, I didn't go back and look at any other notes. I'm, I'm not sure, as Malcolm said, there, there may not be any more detailed notes than that. But I remember the board at the time looking for a middle ground so that if people wanted to try to create lots for new housing opportunities, there was some, some way. Um, that was uh, a little bit easier. It didn't require complicated engineering. Um, and it was very deliberately put into the planning board's hands as a special permit so that it was a, um, you know, a special circumstance. Um, the, the benefits of, of the proposal 
and all special permits have to outweigh any potential negative impacts. Um, I'd submit to the board as a whole that, that the special permit pertains to, to the entire um, proposal here, not just the driveway. Um, so if there are impacts that, uh, if there are negative impacts here that outweigh potential positive impacts, the board has to take all of those into account, whether it's the driveway, where a house might be sited, all of those things uh, are within your purview. You're not just talking about drawing a lot. You're talking about the future use of that lot and how it impacts the, the, the area. Thanks, Chris. And thanks, Pedro. I think in terms of Pedro's suggestion about uh, 7.16, I did, while you were um, responding to Mr. Bursaw, go back and look at that. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Bursaw, did you have anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I had made a general comment about needing to comply with um, <laughs> the regulations in our zoning code. And, and Pedro, you're absolutely 100% right that 7.16, if a house is being used as a tourist home for transient guests, there are some very specific provisions that need to be complied with, right? Right. So, um, Mr. Alster, you should just be aware of that. Um, it's something that we are enforcing now as a town, um, and you know that's that's law that's on the books currently. Um, it is um, not something that's proposed or being modified at this point in time. No, we're aware of that. We have no intentions of doing anything but you know complying by the law. Great, thanks. Are there any more um, comments from the public? Just give it a minute and see if anyone else wants to raise their hand. Okay, I'm not seeing any more hands being raised. So um, we will, let's see, do we have any new communications from other boards, Chris? Uh, no, there, there are no new communications from other boards. Um, this, did this have to go to ComCom? I can't remember. It did go to Conservation Commission as Heather indicated to you last time. That's what um, brought up the, the wetlands issue and uh, forced the driveway to be pushed further to the, to the east uh, out of the wetlands buffer zone. And that, that's why the driveway is proposed where it is. Um, so, so they have already been to Conservation Commission. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I, I do have a question that may bear, uh, that probably should, should do before you close the public hearing. Um, during construction, do you have any sense of, I mean, a 14 foot wide driveway as, as Brandy was saying could probably be narrow, but during construction, do you need that? You might need that big of a driveway if you're bringing a cement truck back, a crane, if you're doing a modular, you probably don't know any of that yet, but that, that could have significant impacts in the area where you are locating the driveway. So, um, I think the board may want to give some consideration to that and maybe maybe the applicant has some thoughts in that regard. Well, I would think a driver would be done at the end of construction, right? Well, they have to get back there to dig the well, dig the septic, dig a foundation. Right, so you know, there'd be a temporary drive until the permanent one's put in. I'm not I'm thinking- saying a, I'm, I, saying I, I'm saying a construction driveway could have more impacts on the tree cover that is there. Uh, right, but should we be considered the, considering the driver that'll be there at the end of the project? Yes, of course. But the uh, if there are alterations to be made during construction, they could very well have impacts on the final landscaping there. All of those vehicles that you're worried about uh, have to drive over public ways. And I don't think any of those have it have a 14 foot lane. So I, I think I think a 12 foot lane is adequate. Thank you. 
Thanks, Chris. And thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Of course, we'll take it into, into consideration. And our uh, intention is to minimize the effect of any uh, activity on the on the site. Okay, board, any additional comments or deliberation that we want to have? Nothing here. I do have a question about the um, the existing driveway. So the it does the concoms um, findings prevent um, them using that as uh, the temporary um, construction driveway or because I, I so they thought the original original plan had that and then it turning off at the end of the driveway. Yeah, Heather, do you want to speak to that? Um, the existing gravel drive that is on lot one right now um, was we had designed it in the very beginning as being a common drive up to the house and then turning into the lot two, the rear lot, which would turn into on the east. And we went back and redesigned it again, and we were going to remove the gravel driveway. And we got comments back from both the Conservation Commission and um, Shay Allister stating that he'd like to keep that as an existing driveway. And that's why the design of the rear lot driveway is as it is right now. I do not believe that they are going to use the driveway on lot one as a construction driveway. I think it's going to be private. The only common area is going to be dressed in the beginning. Did that I, help answer I, your question? I think Jeremy's question was more, did the com, com, con com say that that driveway could continue to be used? Or did they have any commentary on it? As far I as I know, they had, sorry, as far as I know, they had no comment on the existing driveway as to being not used anymore. Their comment was that if we were going to remove it, that they would like us to do an RDA but we're gonna okay. keep it as a usable driveway, private. So, so it was more permitting to remove the driveway than just to leave it in place as an existing condition? Correct. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Jeremy, do you understand that? Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. Okay, Malcolm? So, yeah, I have a question um, about whether 10.4 is applicable in this situation. Because um, I'm looking at the uh, 4.3. And 4.3 says the rear lot may be created provided that all the following conditions can be met for the rear lot. It doesn't have any reference to 10.4 and 10.4 in my reading says that unless it's otherwise stated in the bylaw, which I believe it is in 4.3, uh, then, then the other 10.4 provisions apply. I'm not following you. It says in 4.3.1, rear lots shall be allowed only by special permit of the planning board in the mm -hmm. residence districts. Right. But there's no reference to 10.4 in that. And, 10, and in fact, if you read, the rear lot may be created provided that all of the following conditions can be met, seems to preclude 10.4 as conditions. Mm, no. That seems like a stretch. Yeah, I think you're reading too much into it. Um, uh, the threshold conditions are um, as stated in section 4.3.1 items one through six. The rear lot may be created only if those threshold six threshold conditions are met. If so, then proceed to a special permit issued through 10.4. Where does it say that? It doesn't say that, but that it is- It doesn't is, reference 10.4. I think you're accurate in that observation, Malcolm, but special permit is guided by 10.4. I it, think even without permit, the- yeah. And we can need it only, for a common drive. Special permit can only be issued through 10.4. Okay. Yeah. That's housekeeping then. Yeah, that is point. housekeeping. I, I, housekeeping. <laughs> I think it's important because I think that this- uh, application qualifies by 4.3, but I have serious questions uh, uh, given the criteria in 10.4. You do have questions regarding 10.4? So I hold on. Serious concerns regarding 10.4. Okay, well, let's talk about those then because you um, did not have the opportunity to participate last time. So we did run through these um, during the last discussion. So um, just you to refresh. 
I'm Go not ahead. sure that it was run through the last discussion, but uh, um, the uh, my concern is that uh, they are in fact running a commercial enterprise on the front lot. Uh, they're not ruling out running a commercial enterprise on the rear lot, and I believe that has a negative impact on the community and uh, doesn't have any positive effect at all on yeah. the. Uh, Under you're pulling that out of ten point four just. Generally, I, I, I believe number one and number four uh, I are. Put that on screen? Yeah, that'd be great, Chris. I believe uh, in, in uh, introducing a commercial enterprise into a residential area does not meet the social, economic, and community needs of the town. I don't. I I believe that uh, introducing commercial uh, into a residential neighborhood. Uh, also detracts from the neighborhood character and social structures, especially the social structures. I think you're trying to apply things that we don't know at this point, and all they're trying to do is build a residence, and I don't think any of those things apply. Well, I, I would... Uh, I if, would they're in violation, if they're in violation of the zoning, that's a different thing but it doesn't have to do with the, the rear lot, it has to do with the, the front lot. Um, There's no violation in the rear lot at this point. There's not even a house there. I'm not claiming there's a violation. I'm claiming that this application does not improve the social, economic, and community needs, and it doesn't improve this, the neighborhood character and social structures, which are criteria for a special permit. Malcolm, can you? the house wait, next wait. door is, a, is also a rear lot. <laughs> effectively and you know we need housing so how can that not be a, a social benefit okay so let i propose a condition that uh, this uh, property cannot be rented for less than 30 days i'm not I, willing to I propose a condition work. that is inconsistent with pending um legislation that's happening i, I i'd be more open to um, imposing a condition that it must comply with 7.16 if it's going to be used as a tourist home for transient guests. Uh, can, I, can, I, so, can I just ask a question here? Yeah, what yeah. evidence do we have that this is going to be turned into a short-term rental? I mean, we have no evidence whatsoever. We're making this up. This is kind of like paranoia. This is like <laughs> fake news. This is like creating our own reality here. I, I beg your pardon, Pedro. I, I, I'm perfectly serious in my objections here. Well, can you elaborate uh, then? What the, makes you think that, that, that they are going to use this as I a commercial asked, venture and not as a resident? Because I asked the question and they did not rule it out. They said they want to build a house and they want to retire here. And they're renting the front house as a short-term rental. Well, that is somebody else's property. It's not the applicant's property for, you know, to begin with. It is and the I don't applicant's property. It is. It, it is. By law, it is theirs. But if they, are, well, if they are conforming to zoning as it exists, you know, get off it. <laughs> and if they're not, then that's a, that's a zoning enforcement issue with I'm, the building inspector. I'm it's sorry, Jonathan. We, but we're not doing a site plan review here. We're doing a special permit. And we're doing a special permit for a rear lot of a parcel that meets the rear lot requirements. Right. To build another residence. I would be open to Brandy's suggestion, but in lieu of some condition that um, means that this uh, uh, property will be residential or at least regulated uh, by the town. Um, uh, I would I would vote against the special permit. Can so, we put a condition on on a law that's already in the books? I mean, they have to do it. If they're going to do it as a short term rental, they have to abide by seven one six. But but doesn't special? I mean, I think to Malcolm's point, doesn't special permit give us more latitude than does this, right? And so yep. that's his point with one but it and four. Should be, and right. Become, right. And so I, you know, I mean, I think that's Malcolm's point. And so it's not just, we're not just considering, you know, after the creation of the rear lot, then it's just a residence going up, right? Because before 
the rear lot can be created, it has to go through the special permit process. And so that's the point which all of these things, because once it's a once it's a lot, then it's just right. They're going to build a house by right. So I, I I just want to have the board remember our last special permit for this kind of lot was a property on Castle Hill. And this was not part of the discussion whatsoever. But we also same circumstances. But same circumstances, but different comment, right? And so we did, did this come up in the public comment period about, you know, um, the property um, being used as short term rentals? I don't remember any public comments at all about that. Yeah. You're um, yeah. Okay. Do I? Oh, Chris, do you have your hand raised so that I'll recognize you? <laughs> I'm <laughs> <Thank> sorry. You. <laughs> um, a few things, if, if I may. Uh, your public hearing is still open, so you can still ask and answer questions with the applicant uh, and and uh, abutters. Um, uh, the Castle Hill special permit is relevant to the circumstance. You're looking at a specific site with a specific proposal uh, with specific comments from the applicant and from abutters. Um, you, you are certainly... Uh, uh, this is a special permit through 10.4 and the board has broad latitude here um, and can condition uh, the special permit if after going through each of these six findings makes findings that says you know hey it's great to that the proposal will do this but we have concerns about x therefore we will condition it in this way but you have to make specific findings during deliberation and condition it appropriately. Um, you may wish to have uh, a little Q&A with the applicant if they might be open to conditions uh, before you close the public hearing. When you close the public hearing, you don't have to decide tonight what your answer will be. You can write a draft set of findings and deliberations and come back next time and talk about them amongst yourselves. Um, you have 90 days to make a decision after the hearing is closed. So you have time to have uh, deliberation. You still have time in, in public session to have a, a Q and A if you need to. Uh, and Malcolm and Jeremy are both correct. You have broad latitude here and you can condition uh, the, the permit, the dimensions and the uses in ways that um, uh, if you make appropriate findings uh, would help mitigate the negative impacts that you see. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate the guidance. All right, Mr. Alster, can you answer real plainly for us? How frequently are you using this property as an Airbnb? So yes, uh, we most of the time that uh, of most of the time since we purchased the property, which was a year ago, we stayed there. We did rent the property, I believe, three or four times to Airbnb when we didn't use the property. However, I, I stated before, and I'm stating now as well, the purpose of us building an entire house, residential building, is for us, for, the, for, for us to use it. It wouldn't even make sense economically to build a house just in order to rent it on Airbnb a few weeks here or there. Um, the idea for us is to use the house. If at one point we're not gonna use the house, we would probably put it for sale. And the, the positive impact is that we're adding another unit to the stock, to the housing stock. It's, you know, um, I, I can't stress more our intentions. Our intentions is to build for us another unit on the, on the site that we purchased. Uh, this whole idea about short-term rentals that are coming up now and are interfering with the process of uh, permitting different subdivisions and different developments of, of uh, different areas in town or you know in elsewhere it's not been only in Great Barrington is just you know a little bit of ridiculous to me but but you know we will follow the rules we will follow the law and we will follow any short term rental law that is going to be posted as soon as there is a bylaw we will follow it um, 
at the moment, I'm not aware of a specific bylaw that we need to follow. We, we asked, we went to the town of Brookhaven to get all the information needed for the current house that we own because before we even listed it on Airbnb, we wanted to make sure we're following the law. Uh, and we do follow the law and we're waiting to hear about what the law is going to be determined for the entire, uh, uh, you know, for all the residents of Great Barrington. We're not, I don't think it makes sense to put us apart from everybody else and say, oh, oh because you maybe will have a chance to rent it one day on Airbnb. Therefore, we're gonna now put conditions on, on, on the development of the property. I don't think it makes sense. If it has to happen to us, it happens to, it has to, happen to everybody. And um, if now we want to uh, examine every uh, permit with the short-term rentals in our head, you know, this is, this is going to take us back years, years back and, and it wouldn't even allow for economic development in the area. So, that's beyond it. My intention is to build a house for myself. All right, so thank you. I, I appreciate your perspective. I mean, I, I think you'll hear from this board, this is a special permit. You don't have the right to split the lot like this. So as Chris outlined for us, it is within our authority to condition things. It is within our authority to ask questions that get to the use of the property. Um, and if a board member has those questions, we, we want to have the opportunity to hear from you. Um, and so I appreciate the response, but please just recognize you know, where we are as well in our process. Um, okay, Malcolm, um, do you have any other questions? I think you might be muted. I just wanna make uh, sure. No, I'm not muted. Okay. Okay, that was just a silent, <laughs> silent yeah. All right, um, so board members. So we have a um, common driveway and a rear lot, special permit. Um, we can run through 10.4.2. Um, I thought we had done that before, but I could be wrong. Um, and Malcolm reviewed, <laughs> reviewed the transcript more recently than I did, so. Um, so, well, you know, I think it was in the application though, now that I think about it. Um, so number one, social, economic and community needs which are served by the proposal. Um, or housing. Yeah, it's Heather. a residential house. Okay, Heather, we're gonna deliberate on this and if we need some guidance from you, we'll, um, we'll ask mm -hmm. for it. Sorry about that. No problem, I understand you're passionate. Um, so social economic community needs which are served by the proposal. I mean, I agree with you, Jonathan, a residential house um, is consistent with the zoning. Um, the rear lot meets the criteria for the zone. Um, so that uh, appears to be met from my perspective. And we have a major shortage of housing. This, uh, it is not, yeah, and, and, and part of our problem with uh, uh, shortage of housing is that they're being uh, rented out for short-term rentals. Malcolm, okay, that is completely okay. just false. Yeah, I disagree with that. It's well, just false. It's it is, false it is, information. How could it be false? Because I, mean, I can run through it. We've got about 3,200 units in town, 200 are being rented, and John, only, only 50 of them are being used as short-term rentals by people who don't live here. 200 of those are being, or 150 of them are used by people in our town that need the extra income. Those are facts. How do you get those facts? Chris gave them to us. You can look at the, at the housing study. It's in the housing study. Yeah. And uh, the, the specifics about the town and about the uh, how many uh, um, uh, uh, local residents are require relying on uh, short term rentals to maintain their house. That's in the I well, believe... there's 200 units and 50 of them are being rented by second homeowners. 150 of them are, are being rented by people whose primary residence is being rented out. Those are people who, you know are renting out their the house that they live in, obviously, because they have some kind of need, right? Um, and I, I don't want this to turn into a debate yeah. on short-term rentals. We will literally be here all night because yeah. I know that Pedro and Malcolm have very strong opinions and are I on different sides. Can I make one short comment? <laughs> Hang on. 
<laughs> so we're not going to debate the merits of short-term yeah. rentals. If we're okay. talking about if we're talking about short-term rentals, then Malcolm has to recuse himself because he lives within 300 feet of a short-term rental. <laughs> As Eileen I haven't pointed, gotten any as, legal guidance on that. I am not going there right Eileen now. pointed out three members of the select board all live within 300 feet. Well, uh, then I have to recuse myself and we're going to be in the same mess that the plan that the select board. That's why we so shouldn't be is talking not, about short-term This is rentals. not a short-term rental about discussion. Special permit. This is a, well, so I agree I have, with you there. So I, 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 can I make a comment? <laughs> yes. Is there any way you can turn your camera on? Because it's hard to know when you want to communicate. Oh, no. Well, I can raise my hand. I don't. I'm not in a good spot to do that. Okay. But um, uh, so I um, so I'm wondering, like, yeah, I'm not speaking about um, uh, short-term rentals or as it relates to affordable housing, but I'm wondering just on the impact that it has to the neighborhood. Like, I agree, I fully agree that we need more housing, and this is creating more housing and that it has been stated that it's going to be a residence but the way in which it state was stated doesn't seem to preclude that it's going to that the uh the existing property isn't going to continue to be used as short-term rentals or that the new property wouldn't be used as short-term rentals in addition to be using uh, being used as a residence and it was described as a retirement home and are are they ready to retire during the last um, meeting on this it was discussed that the you know that um the one of the families that i think the new um uh the new where the new lot would be um has young children so does that mean retirement relocating you know after it's built to you know it, to make this the primary residence and or does that mean you know, after the kids have grown up and, you know, so forth. But, and does that mean then? So, you know, it, it, it sounds like that this could continue to be used as a second home, a vacation home, and that, you know, and then, and the other points, it would be used for short-term housing. Now, now when he, if it was the pr existing property was described as only being rented three or four times, I would think that the detriment of that is pretty minimal you know, compared to the um, creation of more housing. And so, you know, so if it's, if it's a use like that, then, you know, maybe that's that we, we consider that the, um, that the benefits outweigh the cost. And so, you know, um, it, because it doesn't seem like from his description of it, that this is, you know, this is really a short-term rental. It's just being utilized as a short-term rental a little bit, but primarily a second home. I mean, we're setting a precedence here for a litmus test for people who want to come and you know build homes yeah. here. But we're this, not. Uh, this is it, like it, this is this kind of reminds me of what it would be like no, you know, to ask people a, if they if they are or ever were a member of the Communist Party. Stop. Well, again, stop. again, we have to remember that this is a special permit. This is not it's, it's normal. A special, it's a special permit. It's for a rear lot for a single family house. Exactly. That's it. The That's house what it has is. to be used consistent with zoning. We've made that abundantly clear. And it's not for a, it's not for a single family. It's for a rear lot. And they could build a they could build a two family there. They, they could, could build a three family. It's an ADU. We're not going to limit that. So it's up. This board I, I, can I, limit that. This board I, can I, limit that if it makes specific findings uh, to do so. And I appreciate that, Chris. And thank you for the reminder. But I, I think it does warrant noting that the adjacent property has a similar development pattern where there's a four lot and a rear lot, both with houses on them. So I don't think it's inconsistent with the development pattern. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to make an argument one way or the other, but uh, your, your powers are broad. You can condition this if you make the appropriate findings. That's all I would like you to know. All right, I'm trying to find my code again. So item two is traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. Um, we've discussed the common portion of the driveway, shared the first, 30 feet or so. The driveway was originally proposed elsewhere, but 
because of wetlands cannot go on the other side of the property. The applicant had a different common driveway configuration that I think, in my opinion, would have been more impactful to the neighbors that's since been removed. So the rear lot would be served by a separate individual driveway. I don't think that's terribly impactful. Any comments on traffic flow and safety? No. Adequacy of utilities and other public services. So this would access electric off of the road and be served by private well and septic. Ms. Brown has provided us information regarding the perkability of the site. So there is feasibility on the septic being installed. And it appears from the information we've been provided that the setbacks are being met from the adjacent properties. Does anybody have any questions about adequacy of utilities or public services? Um, I have a question about whether the um the health uh the board of health uh reviews this in terms of the projected capacity of the building or is it just based on the number of bedrooms bedrooms so the fact that they're actually advertising a capacity of 14. they're not advertising anything on this rear lot that we're talking about right the only thing we have to go on is what they have done with the front lot Septic design is per bedroom. Okay. And it's also full time. The assumption is that the, the number of bedrooms are used full time. Right. So in an instance, when a property is used as a vacation house, the septic gets used during the week or during the weekend or during the, the period while the occupants are there. And then during the period when it's not in use, the system is essentially resting. Okay, let's, let's go on. Neighborhood character and social structure, creation of the rear lot, um, in my opinion, is consistent with the neighborhood character. The adjacent property has a similar setback, as I just mentioned. I, um, and I don't know that there's really any impact to social structure at all by the addition of a single house. You know, I'm 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 going to tell you. I mean, I I am going to vote against this if we can't put some conditions on this in terms of uh, occupancy. And um, uh, if we go through these findings and we don't find any problems, then we're not going to find any conditions. So, if my vote's important, then I think you guys should think about whether there's something here we can do. If it's not important, then that's okay. Well, what's your, your concern about? I, I, have, I have told you that I find that number one and number four are uh, are not met. Can you please explain number four to me? Because I don't understand your rationale there. So the, uh, it, well, the house it, it, relationship it, is the same as the adjacent property. The um, It revolves around the short-term rental. You're, hey, Malcolm, you're jumping he just to short-term rental. He just told you that he's not going to do that. And then he just gave a 10 minute um, uh, uh, oration on why our laws aren't any good. Uh, so I think- I, I, don't, I didn't hear that. Any one of us- Sorry, that's not what I heard. Well, I, th I don't think our bylaws- I are heard him <laughs> say that he's gonna abide by the law. You'll have mm -hmm. to abide by 7.16. You'll have to abide by this special permit. And he told you flat out that he's gonna live in it. When he's here, he's gonna retire in it when he's retired. That's okay, what so then what can be the objection to conditions? Um, nobody's made a condition. Who's objecting to no, a condition? No, Malcolm nobody's has suggested one. a condition. I have suggested that I would be willing to vote for the special permit if there was a condition that at the very minimum stated that they would follow 7.16 uh, 7 uh, and uh, um, uh, the tourist home related to that property. Sure, I'm talking about building it anyway. Good. They're, try, they're talking about building a single family residence. Okay. It, it, if they I, have I, to do I, it I, anyway, I, it's a condition that is somewhat, I, I, you know, but if it's explicitly I've made stated. Statement. If you want to keep arguing about the uh, short term rental, you can keep arguing about the short term rental, but that's my position. 
We're not arguing about short-term rental. We're trying to. I'll vote for that condition because he has to do it anyway. It's the law. Yeah. I got no problem with that condition. All right. Number five, impacts on the natural environment. The creation of a rear lot, there will be impacts on the natural environment with the construction of a driveway, a house, a septic, a yard, all of that. Um, they're avoiding wetland areas. Um, so I don't think it's any more impactful than any other single family home. I don't think it rises to a level of concern. Does anyone have a different opinion? No. Potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. Um, an additional house is going to add to the tax base. It's on well and septic, so it's not impacting sewer and water. Uh, it's not a new curb cut. Uh, it's not any new town roads or anything like that. So I don't think there's a an impact to to the potential, or there's a potential fiscal impact, other than yeah, maybe a slightly positive one. Any other thoughts there? Nope. Okay. Do we want to have any further discussion or ask the applicant or members of the public anything additional? Malcolm or Jeremy? Jeremy? Well, I don't I don't know if I need to discuss anything. I mean, I would say something on why I would be voting way but <laughs> well that. so chris had said in his explanation of process that you know if we needed to have any additional information or leave yeah. this open we could do so personally i'm not leaning towards leaving it open i think we can have a discussion about making a decision yeah. well i guess i mean maybe mine's a comment to the applicant in um just reinforcing what um you and pedro had said um just in the spirit of being neighborly, if there was some sort of open communication between these two properties and the two abutting properties as to, you know, what's going on. And then, of course, I would imagine there's going to be conversations between these two properties. And because I would think if the, talking about the use that were that Malcolm's worried about, I would think that it would have the greatest impact on each of those houses because they're going to be really close together. Um, so anyway. Can you still hear me? I can mm -hmm. hear you. OK, because I'm just getting someone's contacting me, trying to contact. Me. OK. Um, but I mean, basically, that's it. I would just I mean, and this is just in the spirit of any sort of neighborly thing that, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, and I think I speak for the board is that we're hoping that you know, neighbors will communicate their concerns and, you know, and address each other's concerns and so. Yep, agreed. Um, all right, if there's nothing else from the board, I'd entertain a, a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Thank you, Jonathan. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Malcolm. Any discussion? Okay, then we'll vote. Jonathan? Aye. Pedro? Aye. Malcolm? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Brandy? Aye. All right. Our next action item is a vote to continue deny or grant the special permit. Um, I would make a motion to grant the special permit subject to the condition that the um, applicant comply with all sections of town code in place at the time in place, I guess, <laughs> um, including, do, sorry, go ahead. They, they have to comply with that anyway. Agreed, so not, agreed, not a, but yeah. not a condition that you um, exactly would need to impose. It, I, I, if I could prompt you to go through the six criteria again and look at each of them and get three nods of the head if you think you're going in a positive direction. Get three nods of the head on each one of those before you proceed to a motion uh, to grant. I believe we did do that, Chris, did we not? Yes, did if you're satisfied to, that you've done that, that's great. I, I wasn't clear what Jeremy's comment was uh, when he was, if he had concerns, I'm sorry about that. 
I'm satisfied we've reviewed each of the six criteria. Um, Thanks. At criteria four, Malcolm indicated that he was concerned in particular about section 7.16. I think Pedro made the statement just as you just did, Chris, that um, you know there's no need to have a condition regarding 7.16 because the applicant has mm -hmm. to comply with that regardless. But if that makes Malcolm. Malcolm happy to mention it, I, I don't have a problem specifically no. calling it out unless you're telling me that's a procedural error. So so when is the when, when was the change that is now going to use 7.16 to uh, authorize uh, short term rentals? I think it's always been in place. Uh, how many special permits have been granted under 7.16? Well, so we had Good this point. conversation back in October <laughs> when we started talking about short term rentals, Malcolm. And we said, oh, hey, look, we already have something in place. So it just needs to be enforcement. So what's the mechanism for enforcing that a special permit is required for, uh, um, uh, for a tourist home? If, if he's found in violation by the building inspector, then they would have to get a special permit. Could enforce like, like, like everybody else. Like nobody else. <laughs> no, like everybody else. But they have to be found in violation. Well, uh, you know? I mean, shouldn't they it's, be getting I mean, a special permit anyway? I mean, yeah. To Malcolm's point, it it's a it's an issue that has not been enforced. We had this discussion back in October when we right. talked about short term rentals. So right. I don't want to, you know, quibble over it. But Chris, I I would like clarification if you are able to provide guidance. Are are we procedurally doing something wrong by specifically mentioning seven point one six in this? um decision no it's it's not procedurally wrong uh i just am not sure that it's technically needed but it's up right. to you you can put it in there if you want Seven point six has a 10-year clause there that a new house can't be turned into a to a transient home for tourist guests too so it's i'm sorry what was that 7.16 has a 10-year clause you can't convert a, a new home to a tourist home for 10 years. Yeah, it specifically says the special permit granting authority may grant a permit, a special permit in accordance with provisions of 10.4. Okay, and this is not the special permit we are talking about right now, Malcolm, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. okay. For conversion of an existing structure to a tourist home for transient guests within the zoning district specified for such uses in the table of use regulations, provided, however, that no such conversion shall be permitted for a structure erected or enlarged less than 10 years before the date of application of said special permit, and provided also that no more than 10 rental rooms shall be permitted on any single piece of property or on contiguous properties under common or related ownership. And then it goes on to list specific provisions as to parking, loading, fire escapes, repair, et cetera. I, you know, I'm not, um, the, the zoning bylaw is not, um, no zoning bylaw is, is set up to deal with short-term rentals as we've seen them proliferate in the last decade, um, nor is ours. I don't think 7.16 is the place that uh, enforces on short-term rentals in Great Barrington uh, in the various different in many forms that short-term rentals take. So the board is focusing on 7.16. I'm not sure that's, um, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about short-term rentals, that's maybe not the best or maybe the only place to focus. Um, short-term rentals is definitely a, a gray area. I wouldn't necessarily turn to 7.16 all the time in any, every circumstance. Well, I mean, 7.6 seems, 7.16 seems to prohibit uh, using a new house for short-term rentals, or at least for tourist homes for 10 years then. Is that right? That is true. Okay. I'm not really following your logic, Chris, on how it doesn't, by definition, 7.16 could just be renamed from tourist home to short-term rental, and it would fit. We wouldn't have to change anything except the name. By definition, if you look in the building code, it gives you the definition. 
the same definition that's used to define short-term rentals. So a tourist home is defined as any establishment renting more than three and less than 11 rooms. What if you rent two rooms? Yeah, but this is for transient guests. Okay, tourist homes, but it's for transient guests. Like I said, if you change the name, okay. all you have, would have to do is just change the name. Can we talk I, about the application, please? <laughs> yeah, I'm with Jonathan. I, so so Chris, Chris is making the point, and I, I don't disagree with him. I, I was just trying to find a way to bring Malcolm along by making, um, by adding this condition explicitly. But, you know, I, I think it's absolutely accurate that the applicant has to comply with the zoning regardless. So um, I don't think it's necessary. I don't know, Malcolm, can you see that? Well, it seems, as we know, I mean, we have no regulation of short-term rental. Uh, and um, I do think we need regulation of short-term rental, and I think we have very few opportunities to uh, review where short-term rental is going, and this is one. And so your solution is to apply, is to come up with a short-term rental policy that applies to one property in the whole town? Come on. No, I, I'm not coming up with this policy. Yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> You're trying to. Uh, we're going to have a litmus test now for everyone who wants to either oh subdivide a, a, a property or create a flag lot or, or build a house for themselves or, yeah. or build an addition or an ADU. We're going to have a litmus test now. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Um, I think we be we've beaten this to death. I think we should just... <laughs> we you have a vote on question it. on this, Jonathan? <laughs> yeah, we have a, we have a compliant application for a special permit why can't we just grant it yeah but but i think the whole point is it's a special permit and you know i mean i think to pedro's point i mean we're not those aren't special permits it, it is a special permit for a compliant parcel though well that's why i asked earlier whether 10.4 even applies if 10 point it, it applies apply, then um then I think it, uh, then I don't think that it meets, uh, it, it has any, I don't believe that the uh, beneficial effects outweigh the adverse effects. Oh my okay. God. <laughs> What's know, the adverse it, effect? I, I Give me one adverse effect. Chris, that is remind me again, hold, hold on, please. Is, is there is some that... reason why I have to put up with all these personal attacks? No, no. Can, we, can we all just cool it, please? Chris. Can you please help me remember what the vote needs to be for a special permit? Is it three, five, or, or four, five? Four out of five. It's four out of five votes. A supermajority is needed. I don't have a strong sense that right now we have that. And I just don't know where we're going to go to get to that. That's my, my sense. And well, I'm take a strong I'm not, well, well, I'm not, Brandy, I disagree with you. I'm not sure we're not there. I mean, I just, I, I, so Malcolm, I just, I, you definitely should have your own opinion and you have by all means the right to your own opinion. I just, I, I, I don't know if like considering the existing use of the property as it is, is that really a detriment, is that more of a detriment than a benefit of having that property there? That's my question to you. Um. I think that introducing the potential of introducing commercial enterprises into a residential zone is bad for the town. Um, and we have to, we, we need to regulate it. We haven't regulated. It. So we have a, an opportunity here to control it anyway. So, so my, I just want to go ahead, Jeremy. Can I comment? Um, so my question is, is that I, I just don't, I'm not, I haven't been persuaded that the existing use is really commercial. Um, you know, at, if they're gonna, if it's gonna be primarily used as, a, like, in the near future, as a second home, and then it's being, you know, used minimally as short-term housing to sort of fill the gaps or so, fill some of the gaps, then I, I don't know how that's a detriment because it does, there, there is a lot of 
benefit to that scenario. Um, so that, mm -hmm. that's, that's my question. You know, I mean, we've, we've heard, we've, so, I mean, there's definitely a benefit to having second homeowners. I mean, we, the town runs by that. We have, we get a lot of benefit by having second homeowners. So I don't know if that's, there's really a question there. And then having the addition of other people using the property um, when, you know, in some of the periods when those owners aren't there, you know, that also has a benefit to the town. You know, I mean, I've, I've definitely heard from people that, you know, there's a certain kinds of visitors to our town that will only come when they're staying in houses and not in traditional lodging. And so, you know, you know, and is, is really the use of that property um, more detrimental than the use of uh, when the second homeowners are there? And so that's, that's the question that I have for you. Is it really that? And it doesn't sound like this is really a commercial venture. This sounds like primarily this is going to be a second home initially. And then it sounds like a permanent home down the line. And, you know, and one of the properties might become a permanent home sooner than the other or whatever. But yeah, so that's my question to you to, you to consider. No. I, I appreciate that, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I agree with what you said regarding sort of the intensity of use and whether or not it rises to the level of commercial. I mean, I've, I've used Airbnbs and I wouldn't say it was a commercial enterprise whatsoever. We were, we brought our family and we cooked in the kitchen and it made life a lot easier because we had small children and, you know, there was not a concierge there. There were not, you know, staff in the house. It was like I was in my own house and it was very convenient. And you know, we dined in the community and went to the various activities in the community. So, you know, the periodic use of a house, I don't think rises to the level of commercial. Um, no, really, also to the point yeah. of character and fabric, Malcolm, you know, there's no guarantee you're gonna like your neighbors, right? Well, Brandy, uh, you know, we now have our third house in our neighborhood that's converting to short-term rental. And in those three houses, we will never know our neighbors because they will only be there for a week at a time. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, I, I too, Brandy, enjoy short-term rentals. I mean, we're going in, uh, to Sedona in May and we're staying in a short-term rental, but you can't say that uh, it's, a, it's a neighborhood we're staying in because we're not gonna get engaged in the neighborhood. And I don't think uh, other, other houses in the neighborhood people get engaged either. Yeah, I guess so. we'll have to disagree there. Um, okay, so. Let's um, move well, to this. I, I mean, I have one more, but Malcolm, well, I mean, but we're, Malcolm, where you're comparing this property to property, I believe to properties that are completely short-term rentals, not to a primarily second home with short-term rentals. I mean, I think it's very, I think it's very, the use is very different. I, I, I think what we learned tonight, Jeremy, I think you're right. Uh, you know, when, uh, uh, Mr. Alster said that they were using it as a residence and only partially as a short-term rental. Uh, you know, that uh, certainly was different than what we heard uh, in the last uh, public hearing uh, where the neighbors were talking about uh, um, the number of short-term rentals. Um, uh, the public hearing is, well, that, that's, that's, I'm not sure you shouldn't go on, Brandy, because uh, I, I don't know that we're going to reconcile our differences here, but uh, sure. I don't think my vote is going to matter. So. Well, your vote always matters, and you're bringing your opinion to bear, and that's mm -hmm. absolutely legitimate. Um, all right, so having gone through 10.4.2 um, and having stepped through each of the six items and not found any um, majority of opinion indicating any significant negative impacts associated with those six items. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the special permit. So moved. Jonathan, do we have a second? So moved. 
I'll second. Pedro, do we have any further discussion? Jeremy, is your hand up for further discussion? You're muted. No, sorry, it was from before. Okay, thank you. Um, so if there's no further discussion, we'll go ahead and vote. Jonathan? Aye. Pedro? Aye. Malcolm? No. Jeremy? Aye. Randy? Aye. All right, thank you everybody. I appreciate your energy on that. Um, thank you, Heather and Shay. And thank you members of the Sorry. public for participating. Thanks. Thank you. Yep, have a good night. Good night. All right, this is a special meeting. So I wasn't anticipating we would necessarily have any affordable housing discussion, um, but I would like to just throw out there, Pedro had sent around a really interesting uh, Berkshire One document. Was it last night, Pedro? It was yesterday, yes. Um, I think we should read it and see if there's any interesting information to glean from it. I have not had a chance to read it in its entirety, so maybe we can discuss it at a future meeting. And Chris, are you, pardon me? Good luck in reading it. it, it <laughs> it's, it's very repetitive. Okay, well, it'll be a quick read then. Yeah. <laughs> um, just so that we're taking advantage of whatever resources are out there. Um, was there anything else urgent on affordable housing that we want to discuss tonight or? Should we continue? No, but I'm, I'm glad you brought brought up that one Berkshire report. That's a, it's an important report. A lot of thought went into it. And I yeah, do urge you to discuss it at a, at a future meeting. Great, thank you, Chris, we will. Jeremy, did you have something to add? I mean, I did I did start reading and I passed it around a little bit. I mean, I thought, yeah, I mean, I think it's very good. Um, and, um, but in, in terms of speaking about um, affordable housing, I mean, it tangentially relates, relates to that, but I'm wondering if we can start um, uh, at the uh, at a meeting before town meeting to start discuss um, some zoning items for um, next cycle, um, and yeah. not wait until the completion of town meeting. And you know, well, I want to make sure you and I get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So that's why we got to get stuff in before then. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, we, had a, we had a little list that we were working on. So, you know, I think we, we need to not let the effort we put in previously go by and take those items up again. So it was the Stockbridge Road. Take, yeah. Will you um, take some additions to the list tonight? Of course. Oh, you want to, you're ready for them tonight? Well, you want to just I, email them to Chris and me? <laughs> Okay. Sure, definitely. Uh, it's only been a week since our last meeting, so I wouldn't expect there are any board and subcommittee updates, issues, or concerns. Well, we just, uh, CPC did meet on Tuesday, um, and yeah, so, I mean, there's nothing really to update from that. Okay. Great. Thanks. One, 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 one quick one. Uh, the select board last night, the um, uh, the chamber did not submit uh, and ask for a continuation of her hearing. Uh, presumably, she's seeking advice. I hope. Okay. Thank you, Pedro. Did you have something else? Yeah, I just I wanted to invite you to the to the housing subcommittee meeting. It's April sixth. We are going to have a, a guest speaker at the meeting. Uh, Josh Irwin is. Uh, owner of Cantina out in New Marlboro, and um, he's becoming a uh, somewhat of a housing advocate, in particular uh, for to help businesses who are having trouble housing their employees. So he's going to be on, and he's going to give us his perspective on the on the housing. You know, if more of us come, and, does that end up being a quorum, though? I guess we can't. We could listen. We can't deliberate any. Right. Exactly. You can. Okay. You can show up and not listen. But I think it might be interesting to listen to what he has to say. Okay. What time April, again? Six o'clock. Okay. 6. April sixth at six p.m. Yes. Mm. After Garfield walks the dog. That's why we're doing six o'clock. <laughs> so, Brandy. Brandy, one, one, one more thing. Uh, I just learned today that 
is it 148 Maple or 150 Maple, the, the retirement home there, the nursing mm -hmm. home, uh, has gone under contract again. And I talked to one of the realtors and he thought that they were going to proceed with the plans uh, wow. that with, this, with the special permit. Mm, okay, interesting. Well, we'll stay tuned for that then. Yeah. Okay, Malcolm, anything for you? Nope. Okay. Uh, town planners report, Chris? Uh, nothing for tonight. Okay, great. Citizens speak. Anybody out there have anything to say? Please raise your hand. Just raise your hand and Chris will unmute you. All right, seeing no hand raising, I will adjourn at 725 without objection. Thank you everybody for making this special meeting. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening to me. All right. No problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you, Kim. Thank you.